once again, we want to thank you all for coming to tonight's debate for the State Senate and General Assembly from the 1st Legislative District. These, this debate is sponsored by the William J. Hughes Center for Public Policy at the Richard Stockton College and by the Press of Atlantic City. My name is Peter Brophy. I'm the interim executive editor of the Press of Atlantic City. Our moderator for the uh, debate between the General Assembly candidates will begin right now, or is Dr. Curry, as in the um, Senate debate. And the Assembly debate will begin right now. I'll turn it over to Dr. Curry. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I will continue as the moderator for the debate among the Assembly candidates. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce them to you from the audience's left to right. The Democratic incumbents, Nelson Albano and Bob Andrzak. Andrzak. Um, on, on your right, the Republican challengers, Christine Gabor and Sam Fiocchi. Once again, our timer and our questioners are, from the audience's left to right, seated over in the corner, is John Frusian. He is Senior Research Associate from the Hughes Center, and Trudy Gilfillian, who is Staff Reporter for the Press of Atlantic City. Seated in the front row is Aaliyah Montague from the Hughes Center. She is also the timekeeper. She will hold up the 30 second, 15 second, and the stop sign so the candidates can measure the length of their remarks. Let's review the rules of this debate tonight. It is Stockton's policy that we do not allow campaign signs on our grounds. We see the college as neutral territory, so please do not display signs, banners, etc. at the debate tonight. We will have to ask that they be removed. We also ask at this time that you please silence your cell phones so as not to interrupt the candidates. And also, this session is being pre recorded so as not to in interrupt that re recording. The questions will be posed by the two questioners. We will not be taking questions from the floor. We ask that you hold your applause until the end of the debate. The format is one that has been agreed upon by the participants. Each candidate will have a two minute opener. And after that two minute opener, the second part of the debate is that candidates will be addressed with questions. Each candidate uh, that is receiving a question will have two minutes to respond, and then the remaining candidates will have one minute for their own response. At the close of the debate, there will be a one minute closing that each candidate will have. In fairness to the other candidates, we ask that each candidate please be mindful of the time, and we are ready to get started. Thank you. We'll begin with the opening statements, and uh, a coin was tossed, and um, Assemblyman Albano will start. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. I'd like to thank the Press of Atlantic City. I'd like to thank Stockton College for holding this forum and my opponents for being here tonight uh, to do this debate. Um, being as there's a two-minute uh, time restraint, I'm going to tell you why I decided to run again for my fifth term. Um, I'm very passionate about the work that I do. I'm very passionate about the people in this district. Um, some of my accomplishments that I have made over the past, and I'm just going to go to the last two years, I want to continue to work hard and fight for. One of them is education. Four historic bills passed by both houses, signed by the governor, just I believe this past July, dealing with reading disabilities in the state of New Jersey, specifically dyslexia, and making sure a new child is left behind. The hard work and the dedication that I have done to the working people in the state of New Jersey, bringing jobs to South Jersey through voting for a budget with a half a billion dollars in cuts to small business. The New Jersey Economic Opportunity Act that we supported worked with the sponsors because of the original bill did not have District 1 in there. We worked with the sponsors, we worked with leadership, we worked with the governor's administration, and had Cumberland, Cape, and Atlanta County put in that bill. $800 million coming to South Jersey to businesses and corporations to start coming back to the state of New Jersey or start new businesses. My hard work on public, on public safety, making sure our roads stay safe. I have advocated to make sure that no one else goes through what I did or my son did. 
to continue my hard work, dedicating myself to the people of this district and giving you everything that I have. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, a pleasure to be here. Uh, I just want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. I want to thank Stockton, and I want to thank, uh, thank uh, the press of Atlantic City for having the debate tonight. Um, from a young age, I knew I wanted to serve my country and community. And with that, I joined the military. I joined the military to do my part. And I really wanted to uh, do something and give back to my country. Um, I did that. Unfortunately, that was cut short. Uh, coming home and prom being promised a world, uh, as a veteran, you, you don't get that when you come home, really. Realistically, you don't. Um, fortunately, I had my legislative team who was in at the time there for me and to support me. And with them, they asked me to join the team. And I gladly agreed, and I knew I, this was my opportunity to give back to the community and to give back to the state and to give back to all the people that welcomed me home and supported me when I needed it. This was my opportunity to do that. And I promise you, with uh, this election, uh, I will do that. I'm going to fight just as hard for South Jersey as I did for our country. Um, we could work together. Uh, we could bring more economic opportunity to the area. Um, we need to bring our best and brightest together, and with that, uh, we can really turn our economy around. We need to help out our uh, veterans, and we need to help out our seniors. Uh, there, our seniors have already given a lot back to the community, and they deserve more. Our veterans d deserve more. They fought for this country, and when they come home, they're promised a world, and I'm here to give it to them. I'm here to do what I can to help out our veterans in South Jersey, give them the proper health care that they need. So thank you for coming out tonight, and I'm going to fight just as hard for you as I did for our country. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for everyone for hosting this event tonight. Um, the very simple why I'm running is because I'm just fed up. I'm fed up as a taxpayer. I'm fed up walking down the street and seeing empty storefronts. I'm fed up as an elected official having to deal with a state that can't get it together, that can't figure out that taxing people is not how you balance a budget. It's about cutting spending. I'm fed up with people calling me and saying, I need help. I can't get the state to listen. You need to help me. I'm elderly. I can't afford to pay my taxes anymore. I need assistance. I need food stamps. I'm disabled. I don't have resources. I'm just sick and tired like everybody else. I am nobody special. I am just like you. I work a full-time job in addition to being an elected official. I've raised two kids. I have a mortgage. I pay taxes. I'm tired. I want change. South Jersey deserves better than what we have. I want to make a difference because I want to make a difference for everyone, not just myself. I'm tired of knocking on doors while I'm campaigning and having people say to me, you're just another politician, you always say what you're going to do and you never actually do it. You know what? We, are only, we only have ourselves to blame for that. Because the politicians have decided that their own personal agenda is more important than the agenda of the people that they serve. And I'm sick of it. I want to change it. We deserve better. And if we put the right people in place, the people who have true integrity, who understand the definition of ethics, hard work, commitment, and having the agenda to serve the people that put them in that place. That's what we deserve, and that's what I plan on doing. Thank you. Our next speaker. That's my running mate. <laughs> well, anyway, good evening, and thank all. Thank Press of Atlantic City. I want to thank Stockton College. I want to thank Nelson and Bob for uh, coming out tonight. And uh, I'm Sam Fiocchi, Cumberland County Freeholder. I'm running for the State Assembly in the 1st Legislative District. I have an experience as a businessman for nearly four decades, an experience as a county elected official that I think really makes me uniquely qualified for this job. Many years ago, I lost my father in a tragic automobile accident. So I had to leave college and come back and help in the family business with my mother and my brother and take over a business that was fledgling and was in having serious problems. 
So it taught me a lot about hard work and sacrifice. Importance about taking action instead of taking credit. When Assemblyman Albino got into office, he was promising lower property taxes and creating jobs for our local economy. When he was elected, we paid the highest property taxes in the nation. Today, we still pay the highest property taxes in the nation. When he was elected, our economy is weakening. Today, our economy is no better off. Most troubling, though, is while Nelson was in office, ran for office for all the right reason, instead of changing Trenton, I think Trenton changed him for the worse. The events of this past year, the case pending before the Ethics Committee in Trenton, are proof of that. So I want to take us, we want to take us in a new direction. Together, myself, Christine, Susan Asley Schmidt, we went out this summer. We sat down with business owners across the district. We asked them what was preventing them from growing their business and creating jobs. And we took that information and we created an eight-point jobs plan that reflects the very frustrations we heard from these hard-working men and women. So we look forward to going to Trenton, working with the Governor Christie, members of both parties, to put our ideas into action for the people we represent. So saying that, I look forward to an informative debate tonight, and I want to thank you all again for coming. Again, would you please hold your applause until the end of the debate? We can squeeze more questions in that way. Uh, Assemblyman Albano, this question starts with you. What do you think are the most important issues in this campaign? Well, I believe two of the biggest issues um, is property taxes and jobs. Uh, I'm going to talk about the job issue because that's what we spoke about more when we were campaigning um, and what's affecting people more than anything. Um, again, the two biggest important bills that bring jobs back to South Jersey, the cuts in the small business, the New Jersey Economic Opportunity Act that now includes District 1 bringing more jobs, better jobs to this area. Uh, I've worked hard on a lot of issues when it comes to jobs. A lot of people don't know two of the major solar projects being constructed in the state of New Jersey were in Cumberland County at the time. Two major solar projects were being done by an out-of-state contractor. When I was notified that somebody from Pennsylvania was coming in and doing these two solar projects, I sat down with the mayor, my senator, and myself, sat down with Connective Energy and talked this over and had those jobs rebid. In the end, those jobs were done with local people. It's about a supermarket being built in Cumberland County, in the city of Ireland. Again, the developer was from Pennsylvania, sitting down with the contractors, sitting down with the owner, and sitting down with the general contractor. We got 90% of that job done locally. It's about the little jobs, it's about the big jobs, it's about small business, it's about big business. We are doing what we can, along with the governor, on a bipartisan measure, with the House, and the Senate to bring more opportunity back into the state of New Jersey, bring back the industry that we once lost, and encourage and give the grants to businesses to start up in the state of New Jersey, that we are no longer the state that chases business away. We're the friendly state. Thank you. Assemblyman Andrzejczyk, you have one minute to add to that. I definitely agree with uh, Assemblyman Nelson Albino about the uh, jobs in the economy right now. It is definitely one of the biggest issues going on right now. Um, we're fighting to uh, turn that around. With uh, We fought for the Economic Opportunity Act. Um, it was a bill that was going through that really was for North Jersey. Nobody really thought it would benefit uh, South Jersey too much, but it, it will. and and. Because of us, we uh, we fought to make sure South Jersey was a part of that. Uh, initially, it was uh, only seven counties that were a part of that, and we made sure that all three counties in the first district got their piece of the pie. And hopefully, with that, um, we'll be able to create thousands of jobs, uh, especially in Cumberland County, where it's definitely suffering. But we'll also be able to bring industry down into Cape May County as well. So I think uh, the economy will turn around with uh, the e Economic Opportunity Act. Phil DeFiocchi, uh, would you like to take a minute on the most important issues? Um, for nearly four decades, I was a job creator. That's what I did. 
And that's what I plan to do when I go to Trenton. Take those skills and, be, and help bring employment to this district. Our unemployment numbers here are way too high. You know, we're, we're in double digits here where the rest of the state I think is below that. So we put out our eight point plan. That was our idea. We listened to businesses and that's what we intend to do. And we're not going to start in January when elected. November 6th, we're going to hit the ground running and that's what we're going to be doing. I love how incumbents always talk about how important jobs are, but I'm still waiting to see them. We have the highest unemployment rate in the state. Every election we hear, we need jobs. It's literally a four-letter word. When is it going to happen? Every time an election time, we talk about what we've done. Nobody wants to remember about what we haven't done. We have small businesses that cannot survive because of the ridiculous red tape and legislation that Democrats have put into place for years. They can't hire people. How are we going to create jobs if we don't fix the system that has been broken? The governor is trying to fix it. He's going to continue to fix it. The only reason we started fixing it is because we, we elected a Republican governor's office. We need to keep putting Republicans in the legislature, and then we really will, will get the job done. I'm going to ask the candidates to please use a microphone. We're getting signs from the people in the back that they're having difficulty hearing you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this question will start with Mr. Fiocchi. The Stockton poll has found that 80% of New Jersey voters think property taxes in New Jersey have gone up either a little or a lot in the past three years. What can be done about property taxes? Well, property taxes is an issue. And actually, when I stepped down from my business, you know, that was my choice. You know, do I stay in New Jersey and be part of the solution rather than the problem? Because so many people are leaving New Jersey. We're an exit state. And Pennsylvania, who's nearby, has become a destination state. So, you know, a lot of things need to be done. The governor started, you know, I call this a ocean, an ocean liner that's been heading in the wrong direction for many years. And it's going to take a long time to turn that around. So he started to do that. I think this year we probably had the lowest property tax increase that we've had in probably seven or eight years. But need, more work needs to be done. We need to be able to make it affordable for businesses to stay here, for families to stay here. I have two sons. I have a grandson. You know, they want to stay in New Jersey. I love New Jersey. I love this district. You know, this is, why I'm, this is why I'm staying here, and this is why I'm running for this office. You know, we have to work on getting our property taxes down. Ms. Gabor, one minute on that, please. Property taxes. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> My mom couldn't afford to keep her home because her taxes are too high. Uh, this is not uncommon in this uh, society right now. Property taxes are high because we've decided that we don't know how to cut spending. We just want to tax everyone to death. It's the same scenario over and over again. <laughs> yeah, our property taxes are high. It's, a ta it's a high, the highest in the state. I'm frustrated because I keep hearing the same things over and over again, yet we have yet to do anything about it. We need to cut our spending, stop taxing us to death, get government out of the way, Municipalities have a 2% cap. How about the state having a 2% cap? That might help things a little bit. Now, Mr. Andrzak, please, same question. I agree. Uh, I'm nobody special. I'm just right, I'm along with everybody else. I'm an average taxpaying citizen. Um, I'm feeling the effects of the, uh, the property tax as well, and it is too high. But in a bipartisan way, the team working with the governor, uh, we're working on doing the 10% uh, tax cut, which would be a tax credit towards your income tax return. And it, we do need to do more, but we are going in the right direction. And given the opportunity of being put in, uh, back in office, we're going to continue fighting for that and continue on lo lowering the property tax. And Mr. Albano, same question. Um, one thing that we did do, we did um, support and vote for the 2% uh, cap. That was a start. The second thing is to make sure that we continue in the path that we are, to put through balanced budgets every year. And I'm going to go back to the jobs issue. The more people working, the more revenue going back into the state of New Jersey, staying at a balanced budget, we can put that money back in the homeowner's pocket. And that's where we are heading in the right direction. And I have to commend the governor because he is headed in that direction. But it takes 
both the legislature, the Senate, and the governor to work together on a bipartisan measure. That's why we're getting things done. And just a comment what the minority leader said, that this year, this budget was the first time in 10 years that he has ever seen no debate on the floor where it was a balanced budget worked by both sides. We need to continue that path to reduce spending in the state of New Jersey through attrition and lower property taxes. Thank you. start this question with Assemblyman Andrzak. Cayman County continues to experience a seasonal economy with high unemployment in the off season. What could you and the legislature do to bring more year-round employment here? Uh, our economy is seasonal here in South Jersey and it is a big issue and what we need to do is Look at other places like Cape May, who are actually expanding their tourist season. Uh, the other shore communities should be jumping on ship with that and seeing what they're doing differently and seeing what different programs they have going that really would expand it and make it last longer. Instead of only a few months, you're getting almost a whole year out of it. Um, also, a big thing is the Economic Opportunity Act. Once again, it's going to bring jobs and industry down into our district and into our area, creating thousands of jobs and is going to turn the economy around and be uh, great. Also, um, one of my bills that I have going through right now is there, there are so many small businesses that start up and fail due to high taxes and due to the high cost of overhead. What my bill would do is gradually increase the taxes over a period of time. So the everyday person, the uh, shop owner, the mom and pop shops, instead of paying out the butt the first year and going under, uh, this is actually giving our small business owners a fighting chance and being able to build up the economy and being able to create more jobs. Assemblyman Albano, one minute. Um, again, back with the uh, New Jersey Economic Opportunity Act, bringing them dollars down to South, Jer South Jersey. Hopefully we can create jobs in the Cape May area and the county that's noted for their tourism, maybe the jobs and technology. But what I think we need to do also is to make sure that we increase the budget allowance on tourism advertisement in the state of New Jersey. You know, people don't realize on the East Coast or even across the country that Cape May the Jersey Coast has more to offer than beaches. We have the arts, we have theaters, we have small mom and pop shops, we have so much to offer. We have the motorsports park in Cumberland County. Many, many things to offer besides the beaches. It doesn't mean you have to come down four months when it's warm and sit on the beach. We have so much more to offer. And if we can get that message out, get people back over to here and let them know that we're not just four or five months out of the year, we're working 12 months out of the year and help hopefully put these people back to work full time. Real Fiocchi. Remember the mic. Um, when our team got together, actually Susan Adelizi Schmidt, the Senate candidate here, one of the things she mentioned was about the connectivity between our counties. I'm, as you know, I'm a Cumberland County freeholder. Uh, my running mates are Cape May County people. So uh, I think you know the biggest problem we have, we, we don't have an infrastructure that we need, the completion of 55. And I think when, when you, if we can work on that, get that done, now you're talking about better access to Cape May County during the off season. It'll be much easier for people in Cumberland to come down there. And of course, much easier for people to Cape May to come to Cumberland. So this is all part of the plan, I think, that needs to be affected so that we can create more of the year-round jobs that we need and get more of the tourism dollars back that, that they collect down here that don't go back to the county. And I think that's key, key to this district. Well, we're certainly getting an education about the Economic Opportunity Act this evening, aren't we? Uh, and an important act it is. Um, we have a huge tourism industry here, as everyone knows. We don't want to change that. We want to enhance that and make that grow. In addition to that, we want to have year-on-job opportunity for people 
whether they're going to go away to college and come back or they're going to stay and work in the trades. Part of our plan has to do with education, making sure that our vocational technical schools give opportunities to people who currently live here, who want to find a true vocation, maybe not want to go to college but want to go into the trades or something that is related to our industry here so they can have year-round businesses and opportunity to work here all year round. Without the current infrastructure, uh, improvements in infrastructure, without the improvements in the legislation for small businesses, it's never going to work. The eight-point plan that we put together is going to assist in that, but we have to get rid of all this red tape if we want any businesses to grow anywhere, whether it's year-round or seasonal. This question will start with Ms. Gabor. Uh, many of the region's hotel and motel owners have long argued that rental properties, such as condominiums, should have to charge the same tax as they do. Uh, a 14% room tax, for instance, is in place on rooms in the Wildwoods. Do you agree with the idea of increasing the tax on condominium rentals? Okay, the hotel-motel tax was a McGreevy tax, uh, which we shouldn't have had to begin with. Uh, but we have it. Um, and all, everyone knows that once you get a tax, most likely you're never going to get rid of it. Um, what we need to do is figure out a way to make this the most affordable way for our hotel multi owners and our business owners to survive. Um, there has to be a plan put in place to deal with it. Um, we don't want to increase taxes for anyone. I would prefer to see that tax reduced over time. Um, I'm not looking to add taxes for anyone for any reason. We certainly don't need any more taxes, that's for sure. And to, uh, to put a tax on another broad piece of, of people down in this district is unacceptable. We also need to lower that motel tax because it'll make those owners more, it'll be more affordable with other areas. So uh, of course, there again, I would believe it needs to be phased in over time so that you can, the budget can be adjusted for those dollars. And we'll start with Mr. Arbeno, same question. Yes, the answer to make it uh, more fair is not to tax the other group um, to make the, even the score up. What I believe we need to do is to reduce the amount that the motel and hotels currently pay. Um, it was probably a tax that shouldn't have been passed. Um, it put a burden on um, the hotels and motels in this area and put them at a di disadvantage. What we need to do as the state's revenue increase start lowering that rate that these hotels and motels pay to make sure that they are compatible with other states, New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Virginia, whatever it may be, to make sure that the people are not coming here because of the high tax or the room tax, um, but to make sure that we're not putting this burden on condominium owners. Thank you. And Mr. Andrew Zack, same question. Boy, we're getting an education on this eight-point plan tonight. Well, we can continue we, on. Thank you. We do need to lower the taxes. Uh, it needs to be on a fair playing field across the board. Uh, the condominiums need to be tied in with the hotels, motels, and together they both need to be dropped down. But as the economy does come back, we'll be able to work on that in the future. Uh, Assemblyman Albano, Kids Count New Jersey consistently ranks Cumberland County at or near the bottom in terms of child well-being. The county ranks poorly every year in family poverty, prenatal care, school test scores, and abuse and neglect cases. Can anything be done to break this cycle? Well, when they did the new education formula, um, I, along with Senator Andrew, made sure that we worked to make sure that Cumberland County did get its fair share. They believe that the amount of money flowing into Cumberland County shouldn't have been there because the cost of education is cheaper down here in Cumberland County. But they don't realize when you pay teachers and you pay for supplies and you buy computers and you do everything else that has to do with education, basically the cost is the same across the state. We worked with the governor's administration to make sure that that geographical adjustment was adjusted to make sure that that Cumberland County was put back in that in that um, education funding. But I believe what we need to do, Cumberland County is a very unique county. It's probably unlike any other county. It's a diverse county. Um, we've been in 
probably every school in Cumberland County, whether it was reading across America, sitting talking with the teachers, doing career day, but watch the teachers, watch the students. And I'm, I gotta say, I am proud of the job that the education department, the teachers are doing in the state of New Jersey. We are ranked one of the best and there's a reason. We have a great diverse ethnic group in Cumberland County. There's a lot of parents that don't speak English that can't help their children when they come home at night to do their homework. We depend so much on the teachers to do not only what's done in school, but to be done at home. What we need to do is to make sure that we educate our children properly, that the funding goes directly into the classroom, and to make sure that we help the parents so that in turn they can help their children at night when it comes time to doing homework and everything else. Assemblyman Andrews Act, one minute on child well-being. Uh, we really need to do uh, work on our education. Uh, Cumberland County is suffering, uh, but we also need to make it fair. We made sure that Cape May County was included in with that. Um, really, the cost of materials, it doesn't matter where you are, it's all, it all costs the same. So why should one area have to pay less or more than another? or have uh, yet less funding than another. So really, it, we do need to work on Cumberland County, and they do deserve more. And uh, I'm here to provide that for them. Thank you. Freeholder Freyoki. As a Cumberland County freeholder, I witnessed this firsthand. But I think it really goes back to leadership. In the past, probably 25 years, we've had only two years where Republicans have been in control of the freeholder board. And probably in the last decade, we've had Democrats that have been in control of the legislature. And this is where we are. So all of a sudden now, you know, we have a plan where we're going to be able to implement and we're able, able to help those, those people that are in need. So at this point, uh, you know, I'd like to see where it's, when it's coming. As I see, we don't only have a problem with our children and taking care of them. We have a problem taking care of a lot of people. Um, our social issues are a huge problem, not just in Cumberland County, but in Cape May County. And I've seen them firsthand. We have poverty because we have unemployment. We have a, a huge addiction issue, as some of you have heard about earlier. Um, all the breakdown of the family, um, the poor education, all of these factors lead to issues for our children and their parents and their grandparents. We have to pay attention to everyone. Uh, our education system needs to be reformed. We are in the process of doing that. But we need true leadership to make sure that every segment of our population is paid attention to, whether they're elderly, whether they're a child, whether they're a disabled person. Uh, this question is for Mr. Fiocchi. How would your budget priorities differ from the opposition party? Well, look, as Republicans, we believe in streamlining government. We need to be fiscal, con fiscal conservatism. So we have to look everywhere we can to make sure that we make our government as efficient as possible. You know, that's where we have to start. You know, uh, our guys here, they voted for taxes how many times over the years? If you bought tires, they taxed it. Uh, cable TV, they taxed it. Healthcare, tax. You know, so a lot of those taxes need to be removed, and we have to make sure, there again, government streamlined and keep on on the course we are going with the governor's plans. I think we should treat our budget at the state level that we do at home, um, not spending what we don't have, but paying attention to what we're spending our money on. If you're going to spend it, spend it wisely. We have programs that are being neglected, and we have programs that are completely ridiculous and overfunded. I prefer to spend my money wisely because I like to be able to make my mortgage payment. I think the state should do the same. Mr. Andrzak, same question. Uh, we do need to learn how to spend within our means, and uh, that's why we voted for the governor's budget this year. Um, it was a balanced budget that was uh, agreed on both sides, and I think it was done in a record time this year. Um, we need to uh, make sure we work on our education, make sure we have that uh, within the budget uh, in the future, 
and make sure it's better funded. Um, the property tax relief is definitely going to be a, a big thing um, that's going to be beneficial to uh, not only the budget but also the uh, citizens of the state. And also, um, we need to make sure that we don't increase taxes or tolls or anything like that. Um, we're already being taxed enough, with and the tolls are outrageous. And we, what we really need to do is work on bringing the economy back so we could actually bring some of the taxes and fees down. Also, instead of creating new uh, new projects and new plans, we need to fund the ones that we have and make sure that they get the proper funding. Thank you. I kind of pride myself in sometimes I catch slack from my party, but being a conservative Democrat, it's about living within your means. It's about passing balanced budgets. It's about cutting state spending. It's about cutting the size of government. We need to continue in that path. You know, we're heading in that direction, and I got to say, when there was tax increases in two of Corzine's budgets, I voted no. In Chris Christie's first budget, and I'm talking about working together on a bipartisan level. His first budget, I was one of a handful of Democrats that supported his budget. In the last three years, we have passed, again, balanced budget. This year, probably the best budget, the most bipartisan budget ever passed in the state, and it was done by both parties. The cooperation of the Assembly, the Senate, in the governor's office. Again, the minority leader spoke himself and said this has been the most cooperative, the most bipartisan budget he has ever seen since he's been in the legislature. Start this question with Assemblyman Andrzak. Are you satisfied with the state's effort to help affected regions recover from Superstorm Sandy? Is there anything more the state should have done or should be doing? I feel the state has been doing a great job. The governor's office has been doing a great job. Uh, federally, FEMA, not so much. Uh, they need to do more. They need to take down some of the red tape and fund the people that actually need it. Um, everybody was caught up with our shore communities. What they really forgot about were our bay communities. And I feel like they have been uh, neglected. And I wish uh, FEMA and the state did do a little more for our shore, uh, bay communities. Assemblyman Albana, one minute. I'm sorry, you just distracted me with the phone call. Could you repeat the question? Uh, are you satisfied with the state's response to Superstorm oh, yes. Sandy? Yes. Um, you know, when the Superstorm Sandy hit, um, I believe it was probably four or five days prior to the storm hit, hitting. Um, the governor secured everybody in the state. I believe that the state of New Jersey did a great job with the emergency services, preparing people to get ready for the storm. Once the storm came, to make sure that individuals had shelter, working with the utilities to make sure the water and the electric was turned back on. Uh, and I tell everybody when, when this was going on about the first 10 days, um, the governor's office was on the phone with the legislature two, three times a day, making us aware of what was going on, not only in our district, but in the state of New Jersey. The problem is we did our job here. It's FEMA who is neglecting to do their part. There are a lot of people in this state still not in their homes. And I believe that our work in our office, along with the U.S. Senator's office, trying to push and streamline FEMA to get things done, the bureaucracy and the red tape that has been going on over the past year is just unacceptable. Freeholder? Which one? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Freeholder Fiocchi. So confusing. Anyway, um, you know, the, the two counties here, we had the different issues. As freeholder, I was, uh, I was at uh, our Bayshore communities probably two days after the storm, and we, we were pretty devastated down there. Actually, we thought we were going to miss it, and then there, at the very end of the storm, you know, we got hit pretty hard. The rest of the county did pretty well. So unfortunately, because our damage and percentage to our rateables did not rank us high enough, and, and that's really unfortunate. But uh, 
actually, uh, Susan Adelizi Schmidt went to a symposium and she made us aware of these EDA grants that were available. If you go on the EDA site, there were loans and there were, there were low interest loans, I think grants and available to people that were out of their homes and there were still people, I think, out of their homes. So I got to really, I got to thank her for bringing that to the forefront and that was part of the help that's been needed, particularly in our Bayshore communities. Freeholder. I agree that our Bayshore communities did not get the attention that they deserve. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think the formula was uh, flawed when determining whether or not Cumberland County should have been included. Um, the Bayshore community there has been devastated and they have not done anything to assist them and it's been difficult for them. Um, every time you deal with an acronym that's related to the federal government, then you always know that there's going to be a problem. Um, FEMA has never been known to be... Um, productive and efficient. Um, when, after Superstorm Sandy, Sandy hit, uh, Freeholder Director Thornton took the lead and the entire Freeholder Board was in Trenton, fighting with FEMA, DEP, discussing the issues, specifically with the flood maps, which is a huge issue for people in these flood zones and how these flood maps are going to change. Um, that was true leadership. Um, something that I've learned uh, being a member of the Freeholder Board under the dire direction of Gerald Thornton. Uh, the governor did an outstanding job in responding to Superstorm Sandy, Sandy and our emergency management system did a great job. Federal government needs to do more. I'm going to start with Ms. Gabor. The state's voters will be asked on the November ballot if they want to raise the minimum wage to $8.25 per hour and provide annual cost of living increases. Do you support this measure? Why or why not? I support the minimum wage being increased over a period of time. I do not agree that it should be tied to the CPI. Now the problem is because small business owners are going to have a very difficult time hiring people and paying this increased cost. We're trying to create jobs. What's going to happen is they're going to hire less people. They may make a little more, but they're going, to, they're going to have less people employed. So I think it's going to have an adverse effect. So while I do agree that the minimum wage does need to be increased, I think it needs to be done responsibly over a reasonable amount of time and not be tied to the CPI. Mr. Fiocchi. As a business owner over the years, I don't know if I ever hired anybody at minimum wage. It was usually above that number. But uh, we do have a low minimum wage. Uh, the governor's plan, I, I think I agree with. He's talking about a small number to be phased in over a period of time. But it, you cannot tie it. You cannot change the Constitution to change this to the CPI. You know, this is going to be job killing. This is directly opposite of what the plan is in New Jersey to bring businesses in. So uh, certainly I am definitely against that part of it. Mr. Albano. Yes, thank you. Um, I do support increase in uh, minimum wage. Um, I had the, the luck to be on the Labor Committee when this went through our committee. Uh, there was quite a bit of discussion from both sides. And I expressed my concerns when I voted yes in the committee about some of the things that I wanted the sponsors to work with the business industry on. Either way that this bill goes through, and it went through the House and went to the governor, I voted yes. Um, I would have voted for it either way, the way the bill was drafted or the governor's conditional veto when it came back. A lot of people don't realize I work with these people every day, those who start out at minimum wage. And it's not about young kids and it's not about high school and college students. It's about individuals who now are help paying their car bills, their gas bills, their college tuition. There are some people out there working minimum wage jobs because it's their second job. They just can't make a decent living on minimum wage, so I do support the increase. Mr. Andersack. I do feel that there should be an increase, but I uh, also agree with uh, the governor that it should be phased in over a period of time. And uh, it should not be in the Constitution. Uh, the Constitution is the foundation of what this state is. And I feel that's something that doesn't belong in there. Um, also, it would really do uh, a lot of damage to business owners. Um, it would be good for the employees that they would be able to keep. But at the same time, they would probably most likely have to lay off a lot of employees. So I feel that uh, there should be an increase, but it shouldn't be tied into the uh, CPI as well. Assemblyman Albano. 
This question was posed by a Stockton student who uh, the Stockton students and a lot of college students care quite a bit about this issue. What would you do to control the ever increasing costs of college? Well, and that is a big issue. Uh, a lot of, like I said, that's why we need to increase the minimum wage so these students can. Um, the cost of education escalates every year. Um, what I believe we need to do, number one, is the state to make sure that these institutions, the state institutions, not the private, are held accountable for their costs. I believe there's too much money going out to the administrators and everyone else on the upper level that that money needs to put be put into the education of these students. Also, there's a lot of states across the country that subsidize higher education. And I believe as a state, we owe that to our youth who are going into college, trying to go into college, but just can't afford it. Um, if need be, in the future, these costs continue to escalate the way they are. I believe that it might be necessary to support legislation to put a cap on the amount of money that the rate tuition goes up like we did with um, local government in the state of Jersey to um, minimize the cost. Assemblyman Andrews Act. Uh, the cost of tuition is going too high. Uh, for private schools, uh, we would definitely support uh, uh, mergers which would bring the cost down but it would also uh, create a bigger entity and uh, be more competitive for federal grants for the state. Uh, really, we just need to make sure and keep a thumb over top of the schools and make sure that they uh, are spending wisely. And uh, if they do, it, they tend to uh, expect more money every year, but we need to make sure that they are spending within their means and they're not overpaying. Uh, faculty and administration and we really need to uh, stay on top of them. Yes, as far as our state institutions, we certainly need to make that more affordable. We want to keep our students here. You know, and part of our plan too is we want people to stay in New Jersey. So we want them to get educated here and then we want them to stay and we want them to work here. But we probably need to do budget oversight and I would say that's probably the key to it. You know, we have to see, make sure that the money's being spent wisely and that it's so that it makes it more efficient and more affordable for students to come here to our state, con state institutions. I think most of us here are in agreement with this. We need to cap spending. We need to decrease administrative costs. That goes across the board for all education. Um, we do want to keep our children here. Hopefully they will have a job here after they graduate college and can help pay off some of those college bills. Um, uh, colleges in other states are very affordable, specifically in the South. So um, they've been able to figure it out. Um, hopefully the state of New Jersey can. I believe this will be the last question before we get to closings, uh, starting with Mr. Fiocchi. The disparity between wealthy and poor school districts seems to be growing. What can be done to ensure that New Jersey children receive an equal education regardless of where they live? Well, I think we need to, you know, we need to look at the school funding. That there certainly uh, ha has to be done. I think the governor's done that. So uh, we we need to make sure that, you know, that the monies be spent wisely. You know, we have failing districts where they just keep spending more money. We have some of the other districts that uh, are doing okay. So we need to look at that that formula, that, that funding formula, you know, for pretty judiciously. I think the governor has started a good job with education reform. Um, we have uh, the tenure reform, school choice, um, all these options to give opportunities to children um, to seek out a good education from good teachers. Uh, hardworking teachers deserve to be paid well. Um, we also need to have a good family structure at home so when those children go home, after the teacher spent all day with them, that they have a family to go home to that's going to help them do homework, have a good family life, and be ready to go the next day to go back to that teacher. So hopefully, you know, overnight they haven't derailed her teachings or his teachings the next day. There's a lot of work to do from the family side of this as well as education reform. Um, it's not just in the classroom, it is also at home. Uh, we need to make sure that our uh, that the spending is balanced and that it's fair across the board. We need to make sure that uh, 
not only the the teachers but also the parents and the families are involved with um, the students and the children and making sure that they are going down the right path and the school should have programs as far as getting the parents more involved in the child's life and uh, that would uh, most likely end up setting the child on a better path and making the funding worth the while. Yes, there is a, a big disparity in um, the rich towns and the poor towns. Um, I'm going to pull one out of my hat, Cherry Hill, um, Vineland, poor and rich. And the education is different. And I get back to when we talked about the children and the needs of the children in the classroom. We are a very diverse county, totally different than Cherry Hill, where these individuals take a lot more time to instruct, to educate. They have a lot more needs. We need, again, to address the issue with the parents, helping them to help their children. And when you take and you cut education funding and you take teachers out of the classroom, it makes it almost impossible for them to do their job. They are not only being teachers, they're being mentors, they're being parents, they're being counselors, they're being guidance people, they're trying to be everything. And it's a lot more difficult to educate. It takes a lot more time and a lot more people to educate those people in a poor county. And we're ready for closing statements. Um, do the flip of the coin. Assemblyman Albano, you'll go first. Okay, again, uh, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, no matter who you were here to support, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you to Stockton College. Thank you to the Press of Atlantic City. Um, I thought you ran a great debate. Um, I'm just going to tell you about a little bit more about myself, how hardworking, dedicated, and passionate I am about all the work that I do, whether it is education, whether it is public safety, whether it is jobs, whatever, if it's property taxes. But it's about making the state of New Jersey and District 1 a better place to live in. I have worked hard. I have dedicated my basically my life to this job. Um, I love representing the people in District 1 done a lot. I've got a lot of accomplishments. I want to continue that work, continue the fight in education, continue the fight for the jobs down in South Jersey to make sure that they're better paying jobs, that they're jobs with benefits and health care to continue the hard work that I've done in this district. And I thank you and I appreciate your support. I just want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, again, thank uh, Stockton and uh, the press of Atlantic City for having the debate here tonight. Um, to me, it's not just about a job. It's not just about an election. To me, it's about serving the people. Um, I served in the military, and like I said before, that was taken from me uh, way too soon. Um, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to continue serving in the military, but I still have a lot of fight left in me. And I'm bringing that home. I brought that home. And I'm going to continue to fight for South Jersey. Um, I was born and raised here. And this is the place I love. And this is what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for the economy. I'm fighting to bring it back. I'm fighting for everybody else. I'm just an average guy. I'm just like everybody else out here. I'm fighting for all of you. I'm fighting for all of us. So come November 5th, I need your help. And I expect it. And I hope for it. Thank you. Well, again, thank you, the Press of Atlantic City, and uh, thank you, Richard Stockton College, and thanks, Nelson and Bob, for coming out this evening and having this debate. Um, I had the honor of working on Governor Christie's team, and, and as a freeholder, I'm very proud of my record. The time I was there, I was able to close budget deficits, and I voted against two tax budgets with tax increases. But last year, under the Republican control, we had a budget that I'm very proud of. There was no tax increase, there was no layoffs, there was no reduction of services, and we used less surplus than the year before. So 
there again, I want to bring those skills to Trenton. So I ask for your vote on the November 5th. I was a job creator for four decades, and I'll bring those skills as well to Trenton. I intend on being your full-time legislator and bring leadership that you can trust. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for giving us this opportunity this evening. Thank you to um, Nelson and Bob for uh, giving us this opportunity to debate. Um, I just want everybody to take a look at the past and think about all the things that have been going on in the past 10 years and ask yourself if we're in a better place now than we were 10 years ago. And look 10 years ahead and say, do you still want to be in the same place spinning your wheels like you have been over the past 10 years? Do you still want to be there? Because if you do, if that's what you want, then just go with the status quo. I mean, I don't want that. I want change. I want things to get better. You know, I, work, I have a very happy life. I'm happily married. I have great kids. I have a full-time job. I didn't get into this because I felt like seeing my face on TV and mailers that were funded by some giant super PAC for millions of dollars and to try and upset my mother and upset my kids. I did this because it's worth the fight. I did it because it's worth the effort, because you're worth the effort. This is not my agenda. This is about your agenda. It's about making your life here in South Jersey better. So you have a job, so you have a place to go and live and be able to afford your taxes. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. And that's Cabrera. why I'm running. Thank, Thank you. Can we give another can we give another round of applause for our candidates for such a spirited debate?